So I was thinking this morning about dryer lint. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem relevant to what we're doing here today and why you clicked on this video, but stick with me, okay? So I was thinking about sometimes you have a task that you don't like to do at all, but if you can find like one aspect of that task that you don't hate, <laughs> it can help you reframe the whole task and help make it more bearable and maybe even something you look forward to. And so I don't love laundry. I'm a mom of seven, so like I think I got laundried out when the kids were younger, but I find something really satisfying about emptying the dryer lint. I it is satisfying. It's the peeling and it all comes together and it's soft. Like there's nothing. Yeah, there's something sensory about it. Sure. And when, uh, when summer is approaching and we're going to be going camping, I always like stuff the um, empty toilet paper rolls with the dryer lint to make fire starters. Oh, so, so you have a firebox too. I do. Yeah, and I just find there's something satisfying about emptying the dryer lint also because it makes me think like oh if this is full it means i did laundry like okay <laughs> and okay. so so where i'm going with this is for cooking maybe you hate the cleanup but you enjoy the creativity of being able to tweak the recipes and kind of play with things and get things the way you like them. Maybe you strongly dislike cooking, but you like eating or you like feeding those you care about or you like entertaining. Maybe you don't enjoy the prep or it's the assembly you can't stand or at least you dread but you get tremendous satisfaction out of that opening your freezer when it's all over and admiring your accomplishment because that's quite an accomplishment. So whatever your cooking equivalent of a, peeling the dryer, dryer lint, lint is, I want you to think about that today because I want you to focus on the thing about cooking or meal prep or whatever it is that you do enjoy to make the rest of it more bearable so that you can actually get excited about getting your freezer stacked so that you can feed yourself or feed your family and have this aspect of your life taken care of. And to help you with that, today we are sharing some ground beef meals that can go from freezer to crock pot to make things super simple. That was lovely, Sharla. Now you know why she's my friend, because I can come to her with a problem and she is, I have called you this for years. I'm not even kidding. I have called her the queen of silver linings. Do you know what? When you have a lot of kids and a lot of them have some medical issues, it's a hard life. And that's where freezer meals have saved her a lot. And we talk about that sometimes. But I always, and it, she could be having the worst week. And I mean, we're talking like, you bah. know, lose your job, your dog dies, you got a flat tire, you know, or your head gasket went. And that kind of bad, bad, bad week. And she's like, but you know what? <laughs> um, I, I can't even think of an example right now, but she'll be like, but do you know what? I heard a really great new song on my way home on the radio and the lyrics really touched me and it just made it better. <laughs> and I'm like, who are you? This, this lady here is the queen of the change your mindset because otherwise sometimes things get so tough that you... You have to, you have to carry on, you have to cook, you have to eat. Uh, when we were talking about, you know, some of the things about cooking that you might not like, I don't super love the mega sessions. I, you've heard me complain that we did 153 meals. I'm really proud of it, but my goodness, that was our record and it was too much. And I think going into them, I'm like, what is it going to be this time? Like, cause I'm dead on my feet and she's like, oh look, we have some corn and some chicken left over and we're going to make... And I love that about her, but I'm tired and I'm done. 
but why I keep going, part, I like having my freezer stacked. I like eating. I like, I like the convenience of having that food right there at my hand. At, at, I'm, a, I'm a relationship person and I'm a community person. And I just love and come, coming here and spending two days in her kitchen where we get to talk about all of life's mysteries and all of life's problems and all of the great things and the silver linings. And that's why I love freezer meals. Isn't that funny? So whatever it is for you, find that thing. And if you don't have a thing and you can't figure it out, put it in the comments and we'll ask you some questions and help you figure it out because there has got to be something. Maybe it's saving money. Maybe you get satisfaction out of seeing your grocery bill drop because freezer meals will do that for you. Whatever it is, we're gonna help you find it and help you learn to enjoy being in the kitchen again. Because really, when you are cooking every day from scratch, freezer meals have been one of the things that have helped me enjoy cooking again. Um, because I don't have to think about it on a daily basis, on days that I do get to tweak and explore and create, I enjoy it because I don't do that every day anymore. So yeah, I've even begun to like cooking again. So if this is your first time joining us, I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. And we're from Freezer Meals 101. And we are freezer meal experts. And we are here to tell you about ground beef recipes that you can take to the crock pot from the freezer. And we're here to talk about life. <laughs> you get it all today. So we're very philosophical today. <laughs> this first recipe has nothing to do with dry or lint and everything to do with family friendly and less complaining from your children if you've got kids. This is our tater tot casserole with ground beef and veggies. It's also great because it's a full meal. You don't need to make any sides, you don't mm -hmm. need to worry about anything. For most of our meals, we make them right into the freezer bag because I don't love dishes. We both love to simplify things and make our lives easier and your life easier. So we usually just put them in the freezer bag, but for this one, you really do need to start this in a bowl first and transfer it after. So in a bowl, we're gonna mix together some cream of mushroom soup and evaporated milk. Then we're going to add in some garlic. We just use garlic from a jar because it's already minced and super easy. And you're gonna add in some diced onions, some frozen mixed vegetables. You can use whatever mixture that you like or that you know your kids will like. We're gonna add in some ground beef that's already browned, some dry mustard powder, salt and pepper, and frozen tater tots. You're gonna mix that all up. Once it's combined, you're gonna transfer it into a large freezer bag. You're gonna try really hard to get all of the air out of the bag that you can because air is the enemy when you're freezer cooking. It will give you freezer burn and nobody wants freezer burn. I will tell you that when you're doing a recipe that has something frozen in it, and with this one, you've got your frozen mixed vegetables and your frozen tater tots, it is a little bit harder to get the air out of the bag. It's just the nature of things. If you wanna be really sure, you can stick a straw down in the corner and suck the air out. We don't get that. That's pretty personal when you're making freezer <laughs> meals together. Yeah, then. when you're making meals with for another family, we don't do we that. We don't do that. Another option is if you have a sink full of water, you can dip it gently down in there and the water will fill in the gaps as best it can. And so you have your, your seal just above the surface, you can seal it up. When we do 153 freezer meals, we can't really afford to have a sink of water just sitting there for us to do it. We've managed to do a pretty mm -hmm. good job getting the air out the way we do it. But if that is what you want to do, you can go right ahead and do that. It works. Then in a quart size freezer bag, you're gonna add some cheddar cheese and you're gonna staple that bag above the seal to your large freezer bag so that you have everything you need all together. You're gonna put that in your freezer and on the day you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it. Or for this one, because your ground beef is cooked already, you don't have to have it fully thawed to put it in the slow cooker. So you can just thaw it to the point where you can get it out of the, out of the bag 
and then dump it in your slow cooker. Now, for this one, I highly recommend that you use a crock pot liner because with the cheese that you're gonna put on top of this, I didn't mention that part yet, but you're gonna sprinkle your cheese on top. You can do it towards the end of cooking, but with the cheese and with those tater tots, this sticks to the side of your crock pot and it makes cleanup a little bit of a pain. So if you use a crock pot liner, you can just throw that out and not have the dishes to do. See, very, very good. You think of everything. <laughs> We are here to make your life more simple. This next recipe is Southern style ground beef casserole. This is a Charlotte invention. Do you know how I said at the end of our freezer meal day when we're doing our mega sessions and sometimes we have leftover ingredients. You know, it just, you know, we have a little bit of onion, we have some chopped carrots, we have some corn and we have some ground beef. And with the ground beef, sometimes it's a little bit on purpose because we, buy it based on, yes, how much we need, but also if there's a sale and you can get it a specific amount for, you know. Right. And it's more economical to do it that way, we'll buy extra. We know we'll have extra, and then we just figure. We just figure it out. Yeah. So I don't know the reason why we had extra ground beef this time, but this is one of the ones that Charlotte just made up one day, and it has become one of our regular rotations. Um, is it super elevated fancy food? No. Will your family eat it and love it? Yes. And it is It is one of my personal favorites. It's probably in my top 10. I don't know if it was it. We did a top 10 video at the end of last year. We can post that up there of our favorite recipes. And now I can't think if it was in mine. It might be in my favorite top 10 this year. Mm. We'll see. We start out with our ground beef that's been browned. We're gonna add it into our large resealable freezer bag. We're going to add in some chopped onion, chopped green pepper, kernel corn. Now you can use canned corn that's been drained or frozen corn. We're gonna add in tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and some chili powder, some salt and pepper, and that's it. We're going to mix it around right in our bag. Sometimes our bags act as the best mixing bowl, unless you're doing the tater tot casserole and then there's no chance it would fit and be able to mix. We're going to remove that excess air and seal it up. We can add a second bag that has some shredded cheese in it because you're going to top it with the cheese on the day that you go to cook it. Um, we don't always. Sometimes we can just add the cheese ourselves on the day of. We're going to staple the two bags together and then you can freeze it. On the day of cooking, you want to thaw it and you just dump this right into your slow cooker. You can put it on low for three to five hours and then, you know, that 20 minutes before you go to serve it, sprinkle your cheese on, let it get good and melty. And sometimes we serve this with rice, but it's actually hearty enough that you could just serve it like a chili on its own, maybe with a bun, because you know me, I like to have the carb there. Um, it's so good. There is, there's nothing you need to do to this. It's really good. We like to have it with hot sauce because we're a hot sauce family. We put ketchup on it. My husband will, I, I will too sometimes, we'll put a hot sauce on it. But really, it's, it's flavorful. It's flavorful already. And it's just simple and cozy and comforting and really, really, really delicious. Before I get to this next recipe, I want to give you a few tips on how to make this a lot easier for yourself. Okay, the first one is... If you're gonna make these meals, find ground beef that's on sale. So you find your ground beef that's on sale and then if you're a member of the Freezer Meals 101 Club, you can click on the ground beef button. It'll populate all the ground beef recipes for you and then you're going to hit the slow cooker button after that and it will populate only the ground beef slow cooker recipe so it'll narrow it even more and then you can pick your favorites from that and of course if you're in the club you can then click for it to print you off your shopping list your prep list and your principal labels so that you've got the cooking instructions on those but once you've done that and you've done your grocery shopping then take that ground beef and lay it on a foil lined cookie sheet and cook it in your oven because then you can do large quantities all at once and take it out like part way through and use like we use a mix and chop I think it's called it's a thing that helps you separate your meat when you're cooking it 
and just mix that around, put it back in, and then you can drain your fat, you know, halfway through if you want, or just at the end, whatever works best for you. You can, if you want, season it with salt and pepper. I know Christy always seasons hers. I don't usually season mine, but that's a preference thing. So then you have your ground beef all cooked. Sometimes we're doing so many ground beef recipes that we do multiple trays in the oven. We both have a double oven, mm -hmm. so we're able to cook two trays at once. Um, and then you want to let that ground beef cool before you put it into your bags. That just helps you to get the air out, helps there not to be condensation in the bag. Also, you don't want to heat up anything that's already in your freezer or make your freezer work harder than it has to by putting warm food in it. I'm going to actually say something else. If you're actually preparing this much ground beef, you have quite a few freezer meals in your chamber. <laughs> split your days up plan mm -hmm. it ahead because if this sounds like it's gonna already overwhelming break it down so one day is going to be your prep day and then the next day is going to be your assembly day so once you've got your ground beef browned instead of cooling it and putting which you can cool it and put it in your bags right then and into your fridge i use uh these nice big i don't have any here today but at the dollar store, I get nice big plastic containers. They're BPA free, they're safe to use. I put the beef in there, I put it in my fridge overnight, and then I work on my onions, I shred my cheese, I, I get all my prep ready. So the next day when you go to assemble, it's just so easy. Um, one pound of ground beef is two and a third cups of beef, if you're going to, of the, of the cooked beef, if you're going yeah. to do it that way. And we keep a one cup scoop or a one cup measure as our scoop in the ground beef. And so on the day we're assembling these meals, you've got your scoop already in there and you know the exact measurement to make one cup in your bag. And whether it calls for one cup, one and a half or two, that allows you to just do it quickly. We usually double or quadruple each of the recipes because that makes it faster too. You can get more done in less time. So. If you're willing to give this a try, these tips will help so much. They really, really will. And if you've never done this before, we do actually have a beginner series. Yes, we do. So you can, I'll put a video right there. And maybe we'll put a link of it down below yeah. because that one is worth its weight in gold to watch how we prep, how we plan. And then we have some beginner recipes that you can use to enjoy. Now this Sloppy Joe's recipe is nice because it is really just a dump and go. Once you have your ground beef browned, you're going to add your ground beef into your freezer bag and then add some finely chopped onion, some minced garlic, again, we're just using it from the jar, some green pepper that's been finely chopped, salt, pepper, dry mustard powder, chili sauce, tomato sauce, a little squirt of ketchup, some brown sugar, that's just one tablespoon, so you just a little bit just to cut the acidity from the tomato, Worcestershire sauce, and a bit of lemon juice to brighten that up. You're gonna squish all that together in your freezer bag. You're gonna remove your excess air, seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to cook this, thaw it well enough to get it into your slow cooker and then just heat that up two to three hours and it will be done. And you can serve this on buns, or if you're gluten-free, you can just use some gluten-free buns, and you've got yourself some easy, family-friendly sloppy joes. Ground mm -hmm. beef recipes that go in the slow cooker, I think just as a general rule are homey. And you're pairing together like freezer meals, meaning they're already done, with your slow cooker, meaning you can set it and forget it. And so what could be better? It couldn't be any easier than that. This next recipe is another one that we have been doing for years and years. It is called beef hash and it really is just what it sounds like and I'll tell you about it. In a large bowl, we're gonna combine our ground beef. We're going to add in half a bag of frozen hash browns. We're gonna add in onion that's been finely chopped, some dry onion soup mix. You, you can buy it either in bulk or in the little packets. We'll just add one packet worth. We'll add in some beef broth 
and a little bit of pepper. We're gonna mix that around in the bowl and put it into our freezer bag. We're gonna remove the excess air, seal it up. We're gonna add some cheddar cheese to a medium bag that we can sprinkle on top on the day of cooking. We're gonna staple the two bags together and freeze it. On the day of cooking, just like everything else, we're just gonna thaw it. We're gonna get it into the slow cooker. This is another one that's gonna stick maybe because mm -hmm. of the potatoes. So you either wanna spray it or consider using a slow cooker liner. Um, and have it in there for a couple of hours. And then the, again, the last 20 or 30 minutes, top it with that cheese, let it get all good and melty. This is definitely one that we have with ketchup or some hot sauce. Or salsa. Or ooh, salsa. Mm -hmm. And I will point out, because we're only using half a bag of hash browns, like we have one kilo bags here, we're in Canada. So that's like two pounds. You only need half of that, so it makes sense to make two of these. And then you can have one now and one later, or you can put them both in your freezer and have them. And those are future nights that you don't have to cook. You just have to pull it out. Yeah, and you're mixing it together in your bowl anyway. So you might as well just, you know, mix it and then portion it into two bags. And mm -hmm. you'll be so glad to have an extra one of these. This is a recipe that whenever we have it, when our kids were younger, and we would get a sitter to go out somewhere. We would always like have this out because it's really easy for the sitter to make or you can start it in the slow cooker before you even leave. Mm -hmm. This can also be cooked in the oven. So again, just super easy for the sitter to make. And it was something where the kids all like it. Nobody's gonna complain. Yes, and, and they know that when it comes out of the freezer, they know you're going out tonight. <laughs> Pretty much. Sometimes it happens, right? Your kids know. <laughs> Pretty much. It's For years, it was tater tot casserole, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. That was, it was, that's different than the tater tot with beef and veggies. There is a yes. different tater tot casserole that with has brown sausage. sausage. And, and even to this day, because I do it in the oven, if it's something that I haven't defrosted, like if I'm not ready, listen, we have freezers full and then we still get that three o'clock, oh, I didn't take anything out this morning. What can I take out that'll thaw quickly? 20 minutes in the sink with some lu lukewarm water is gonna be enough for you to be able to get that sucker into a, into a dish <laughs> that you can put it in the oven and you might need a little extra time in the oven, but it, it is a good one for that. And so the, I always like to have a few of those in your freezer that are gonna be you know your life savers, your time savers. <laughs> yes. Uh, the reason I know what she served for sitters is that one of oh, my oldest yeah. daughter was her That's sitter, right. That's right. And she loved that tater tot casserole, the one with the sausage. She wouldn't touch this one we shared today with a 10 foot pole because it's got veggies in it. But Heaven forbid. <laughs> 21 years old and she won't eat a vegetable. But that's, you know, that's her life now. <laughs> but you're right. That is how you knew that. Yes. That is so funny. <laughs> that is what I would take out. You want to hang on a sec. You want to talk about things coming full circle. Now my daughter babysits her grandbaby. Okay. Isn't that funny? It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, can you believe how we got here? No. no sometimes <laughs> I don't even know. How we, did this even happen? Like, Christy's my neighbor, if you don't know. Two doors that way. And um, we have known each other since her kids were like little, little. My little. boy was about 18, 17 months when we moved here. And he's 13 now. So, you know, it's been a long time. <laughs> and our kids have kind of, her kids were just that much older that they were like the cool, you know, almost like an older cousin, right? Our kids have almost grown up like cousins. And yeah. I was talking about that with my daughter because she's like saying your daughter was like your sister. And I'm like, we think it's more like cousins because they're that close. Yeah. They're close like sisters, but they grew up in separate houses. Totally. And they live two doors down from each other. It's awesome. And in fact, I'm taking them both with me tonight to go to a concert. It's true. It's really great. <laughs> Aw. It's been so awesome. It is. Get a good friend. It just enriches your life so much. That has... Yes, and, and then do freezer meals with them. And that's how our friendship grew, was we the first time that we met, but well, not the first time we met, but the first time we talked. Yeah, and really yeah. talked, you know? Freezer meals came up because she saw a freezer meal cookbook on my shelf and asked if I did freezer meals, and she had done them before, I had done them before, and we're like, do you want to try to do them together? 
which made me a little nervous because it does it depends you have to get the right person someone that will you do you know pull their weight you've and... been burned i've not <laughs> yeah i've had good freezer meal partners in the past before i met charla and and some of yours were better than others and mm -hmm. um but we were just a really good match yeah we were a really good match and it helps a lot that we live so close because she can drive her meals back and forth. We keep a cooler on the front step when we're doing our big mega sessions. We're gonna put a link right there mm -hmm. to that, you know, she was complaining about the 153 freezer meals, I but was. we're gonna show you how we actually did that. <laughs> I shouldn't complain, I should be grateful, but in the moment, I am not enjoying myself. <laughs> okay, so speaking of gratitude, I planned this video, uh, of course, yes, it's ground beef meals, which ground beef is, is fairly popular. Um, it's slow cooker, which, you know, is another thing that Who doesn't have a slow cooker? Save people time. And so there's all those things. But my real purpose in showing you these recipes and how family friendly and kind of homey they are is to get you to rethink cooking. And, you know, I shared in the beginning how I want you to find like one thing that you like about cooking and focus on that and spend more of your energy. And I'm gonna ask you to do another thing. And I don't usually ask so much of you in these videos, and I know that I'm asking a lot, but I'm gonna ask you to change your mindset from a, I have to cook, to I get to cook. And I know that's a big ask and it's not something you can do overnight, but there truly are people, and I know some of them, who can't cook, whether it's because of mobility issues or extreme chronic pain or food scarcity and grocery prices and all of that can't cook is the reality. And so I want you to shift your mindset. If you can, just try it on. <laughs> try it on. To, I get to cook. I get to make meals for myself. Or I get to feed my family. I get to save money by doing batch cooking. I get to save time by making these ahead. I get to instead of I have to. And I get to have meals in my freezer so that I'm not as stressed and I can enjoy life a little more. So I know it's a big ask, but I'm asking you to try out these two new mindset things today. <laughs> and Christy has just, she's on day two of listening to a gratitude it's like a meditation. It's on Calm, the app, and there's a seven day gratitude meditation that you can do every morning. And even this morning, you know, they're talking about you're grateful for your body and you, you will laugh at this because like in the last week, I, well, the last month, I've really been complaining a lot because I am, okay, TMI, sorry, but I mean, <laughs> I'm firmly in perimenopause. I'm constantly hot. My joints ache. I don't want to go into more details, but all the things. I'm doing all the things. And it's pretty rotten. And so sitting there saying, listening to this thing saying, you know, you should appreciate your body. You know what? Our fair is in town. And the day before, I walked all over that place and I'm not sore today, my legs did their job, my feet did their job, my back isn't sore. My body is great, and I am grateful for my body. So there's the gratitude. It is the bit of a mind shift. I kind of scoffed at it this morning when I was first heard it, but do you know what, in the same breath, they also are like, you have eyesight. Not everybody has eyesight. You have hearing. Not everybody has hearing. One of Charlotte's daughters has gone deaf, and the mountains that they have climbed to help this girl, this isn't just, you know, we're not being flippant. We live real lives and we go through hard things. And sometimes a mindset is the change that you need. Sometimes it's a silver lining. 
That's right. So I know this video feels a little we're heavy. We're very philosophical <laughs> it's today. Like we are. You came in here expecting beef freezer meals. And if you don't want to hear the stuff coming out of our mouths, you just you'll see us do the next one. It's okay. It's okay. It doesn't hurt our feelings because we have gratitude in our lives. That's oh, right. I'm gonna be. In, I'm gonna have some in seven days. <laughs> You've got five more days. I got five more days to build my gratitude. <laughs> so okay, I am grateful for this chili recipe. <laughs> I'm grateful for this chili recipe because it's awesome. I first introduced this chili to Christy like years and years ago, and I remember it was probably 10 or 11 years ago. Oh yeah, it was one been... of our first sessions, and she was like, "I'm also gonna say." When we first started, when we were doing it together, it was always at the end because you're like, I want to see how much ground beef we have left yeah. so that I can, because she eyeballed this recipe. When it was time to put this recipe down on paper, it was hard to actually get it on paper Yes. because she just dumped stuff in. We had red sauce and we had ground beef and we had, oh, there's some onions. Good. Oh, that looks right. And the one after this is spaghetti sauce and it's the same darn thing. But continue with your story because this isn't this isn't just your grandma's chili it's really good no so I remember saying that I wanted to make this chili and Christy said to me you know I have a really good chili recipe and I'm pretty set on that so I mean we can try yours but I'm just letting you know like like yeah it's you know <laughs> I've got mine and I'm I kind of like I'm good I'm a yeah. good cook I'm, I've been She's a good cook for a long time. <laughs> I got a good chili recipe. And mine's all eyeball too. Like, there's no is there a recipe for chili. No. It's cans and whatever. All the things. All the things. She has a secret ingredient. But I've sold her. She has sold me. <laughs> yes and no. I still love my chili recipe. Of course. And, and sometimes, if we don't have it, I like chili more than anybody else in my family. Mm -hmm. So really, going forward, I should probably cut this one in half. So that we don't have to eat it for leftovers for so, so long. So, like, put it in smaller in bags. In smaller bags. Yeah. Um, if you live by yourself or it's just two of you um, and you're looking at these thinking, what are these women thinking? What am I going to do with all these huge recipes? You just put them into two smaller bags. And then you maybe can't do them in the slow cooker if they're that small, but um, they do nicely on the stove top or in the oven. Mm -hmm. And then you're not eating leftovers for days. And the nice thing about these recipes we're doing today is because you've browned your ground beef already, they're just a quick reheat. And so some of these you could do in your microwave or in a skillet or on a stovetop pot. Mm -hmm. So if you live on your own, you just mix this all together in a bowl and then portion it out into quart size freezer bags. And that's it. And you can get like two to four of those quart size bags per recipe of the ones we've done today. And honestly, they would all portion out. They really, like that they really would. Like that beef hash, why not? You're mixing it together in a bowl anyway. Same with that tater tot casserole. You really and can. And that one goes in the oven. So you can put it in a smaller container in your oven. And even if you, you live on your own, these recipes work super well. Yeah, they really, really do. So back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> back to about our the chili. chili. About the chili here. I did make my own chili, and I'm like, oh, I haven't had my own chili in a really long time, <laughs> and and it's really good. I do like my chili, but I like free, I like Charlotte's chili. And I remember one day, we were at a potluck, and I took this as a, the potluck item, and we're eating it, and I'm just in, sitting in front of a campfire at this potluck, enjoying the chili, and I texted her, and I'm like. I know you already know this, but your chili's really great. And she's like, thanks. I know. <laughs> it's good. It is. And maybe that's a silver lining. Maybe that's your silver lining. You got to look for it sometimes. All right. Tell us about your, your My, the best freezer chili. The best freezer chili. The recipe for this and the other ones is going to be in the description down below. So you can, you don't have to madly be writing out these ingredients as I go. You're going to add your browned ground beef into your freezer bag and then some coarsely chopped or, you know, medium chopped onion. Now, my mother-in-law tells me that more onion is the secret to good chili. And so in the recipe, I've actually said one onion, 
but when we make this for ourselves, I do use more than one onion per bag. Then you're gonna add in some minced garlic, some kidney beans. Now you don't need to rinse or drain these because it's gonna be chilly. It's soupy and, and good. Then we're gonna add a can of chili style beans with the liquid. So those are made by Heinz and there's just a little bit of extra flavor in the chili style ones, so I like them. Then add 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, some tomato paste, chili powder, cumin, paprika, a dash of pepper. Now my secret ingredient that is now not so secret because I have shared it with the world is some maple syrup. And if we didn't mention it before, Christy and I are Canadian, and so it makes me smile that this has a Canadian ingredient in it as well. Then you're going to squish that together in your bag, seal it after you've gotten as much air out as you can, and then freeze it. And of course, on the day you go to make this, you can do it in a stovetop pot, or today we are doing these in the slow cooker. So you just thaw it enough to get it into your slow cooker and cook it in there on low for three to five hours. You can do it on high for less, and then you can serve this on its own with buns, or my favorite way to eat this chili is I whip up a really easy recipe for popovers, which are kind of like a cheater Yorkshire pudding. Popovers are great, I've made them yes. for years. And then yeah. you spoon this into the popovers. It's very good. Oh, that would be really good. Yeah. I don't know what. Have we ever talked about that before? In 10 years, I'm sure we must have, but I... <laughs> yes, probably, but not recently. No. And actually, I haven't served it that way, like, this year. And I've always served now it Now I want to make popovers. But... It's been a while. You know why? It's mm. because I've been taking the chili with us this year. I've <sighs> never had it at home. I've been taking it with us. We go to the mountains. In the winter, we go um, to ski, and in the summer, we go to hike and um, mountain bike. And so, I don't mountain bike, I hike though. Uh, and so, I take this with us to the mountains because when you've had a day of activity and you are like tired, <laughs> chili is where it's at. And yeah. I've taken it camping lots too. Oh, interesting. And so I You're haven't right. had it at home and that's why I'm realizing that's why we haven't had it with popovers. So I that's have really one funny. in the freezer right now and I'm kind of thinking, hmm, oh, I had to make the popovers to take it to the mountains, but I might have to re rejig that plan. That's funny. That's awesome. This next recipe is spaghetti sauce and sort of like the chili, it was one that Charlotte would just, we had ground beef and we had red sauce and so Charlotte just kind of mixed it in this huge bowl and kept adding stuff until it looked right. And you know, somebody in our Facebook group recently said, you know, how do I get to the point where I don't have to measure things anymore? Like, where, like you guys are so good at it. You just squeeze and you squish and you, to be fair, I, 20 years cooking and I still measure. You are less of a measurer. Yeah, I'm not big on measuring, and to be honest, that's been a challenge with now having a freezer meal website and with having the club because I've had to go back and recreate these recipes and measure to try yeah. to figure out like, okay, how much actually am I using? Mm -hmm. And let's use some measuring spoons and let's not just go, oh, like a little of this and a little of that and a handful of, you know. Um, and so, and now that we do have them down and written down for you, I can go back to when we're making them, That's just right. throwing things in. But and she has a knack for it. We've talked a lot before about her having a really good taste buds. Um, although we are doing ground beef recipes, a lot of these she would have made with veggie beef. Yeah, I don't actually eat beef. I haven't in over 20 years. But we use, uh, so when we do our freezer meals together, I do uh, like a veggie beef. I use the Eve's ground round. It's a question that we get a lot about which one I use. I use that and I especially like the Mexican 
flavored one to do things like the chili or that Southwest mm -hmm. one, casserole I would do. Um, Taco meat. Yeah, I'll, anything that would be that kind of flavor I use the Mexican for. I don't use the Italian flavored one for things like the spaghetti sauce. I just use the original. But I have a trick that works for me. It might not work for you, but what I like to do is I brown mine. It's already cooked. You don't have to brown it but I prefer the texture a lot if I brown it. I don't, I, it tastes like rubbery to me and not meat-like, which I know, you know, if you're not eating meat, maybe you don't care. But for me, I, I prefer the texture right. if I brown it. So I brown my veggie beef. We've got a Mexican veggie beef, an original veggie beef, and then when we go to make the recipes, We've got two of hers with the real ground beef in it and two of mine with the fake meat. And that's that's how we do it. And um, I do use ground beef in some recipes because some of my kids like it, my husband eats it. I have one daughter that doesn't eat beef. So it just, you know, I, I do use ground beef. Um, I can tell you that the meals taste good because I really legitimately eat them. I just eat them with a the veggie beef, so. So watching her narrow it down to get the spaghetti sauce recipe was kind of fun because there's a lot going on here. The recipe is down below, which is good because this is a huge recipe. Uh, we start out with our bag of lean ground beef that's been browned or your veggie beef if you are so inclined. We're gonna add in a chopped onion, some green bell pepper that's been chopped, some garlic, some tomato <laughs> sauce, some tomato paste, some diced tomatoes, some water, a bay leaf, some parsley, some honey, oregano, basil, thyme, salt, and pepper. Did you get all that? Because there is a lot going on here. You're gonna mix it around in your bag because that's our favorite mixing bowl and seal it up after getting all that air out. On the day of cooking, this is great to just have in your slow cooker all afternoon, letting those flavors meld and get all gooey and yummy and warm and awesome. And then you just serve this on pasta, whatever kind you want. Obviously you want it on spaghetti, but you can do whatever. It's really, really, really delicious. It is, it is, it is. I mean, it's my recipe, so I kind of feel like I'm bragging if I say it's good, but it's good. Like it's, you know, and what we usually do with this one actually is we simplify it when we do our mega sessions because we put the ground beef, onion, um, green pepper, and garlic in the bag. And then we just add some of the red sauce recipe. And that's um, a recipe that you can find in the club. And we just add some like big giant scoops. We've got a four cup measuring thing that we just add some big giant scoops mm -hmm. of the red sauce in there until it looks about right. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you got your right ratio of like yeah. meat and vegetables mm -hmm. to the sauce and then um, seal it and freeze it. So yeah. Years ago, a friend of mine fell off her horse. Her horse she just, she was taking a selfie with her daughter on horseback. <laughs> And it just, something spooked the horse and he did a quick whatever and she was on the ground and she was hurt. And she came into work one day, like she had taken a day off and then the first day I saw her, she could hardly walk. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And so I brought her some freezer meals and this was one of them. Cause, cause she's like, oh, I don't need freezer meals. And I'm like, well, who's gonna cook? Are your, te <laughs> are your teenagers gonna cook? Is your 10 year old gonna cook? No, you're gonna be stuck at that stove. You are getting some freezer meals. So I have completely like forced freezer meals on friends before <laughs> and that's okay. That's part of the fun. Um, and that this was the one that she raved about the most. I, I think I had also given her some hamburger soup, but this one was the one. And she is like, what is even going on <laughs> in that spaghetti sauce? And I'm like, I know, I know. I found a leprechaun because <laughs> I found somebody that has, you know, incredible taste buds. And now you found her too. <laughs> so hopefully you will give that a try and see. I used to just, you know, when I was an early cook, as in I can only cook two things and one of them was an appetizer. Um, I used to just do spaghetti and a jar of prego and I thought I was being really fancy if I sprinkled some like craft Parmesan on there. Like that was my version of fancy. Do you remember the first time you asked 
do you want to do spaghetti sauce? And I'm like, no. Yes. And then the next, and she's like, oh, okay. The next freezer meals, that like three months later, do you want to do spaghetti sauce? No, yeah, I'm good. Three months later, do you want to do a spaghetti sauce? I'm like, why? Why do you want to do a spaghetti sauce? You can yeah. buy Prego in a jar. Yes. I'm a cook. And I've made it from scratch before, but I didn't care. I, I didn't care. And uh, and she and she's, I'm like, yes, let's do the spaghetti sauce. And then I had the spaghetti sauce. And I'm like, oh, I get it. You want to do a spaghetti sauce. This, you know, there is a place in this world for Prego. I have some in my pantry right now. Yep. But there is, there is a need in the world for real, like, nice homemade, from scratch spaghetti sauce. And for 10 years now, we've been making this, like, very she regularly. She had to convince me, because I didn't understand. I really, and because I was like, well, you, you can spaghetti sauce. To me, it was a canned item. Right. Like, my mom had made spaghetti sauce in a, in a jar. Right. In, in our sealer room, like... <laughs> Yeah. But there's a place for spaghetti sauce in a bag, and this is it, because it's good. It is good. It <laughs> is good. It is good. Now, if you have watched our other videos, you might be aware that our ground beef stroganoff is one of our favorites. Favorites. And it started off as a slow cooker recipe, and over time, we have mostly transitioned it to be a skillet meal for our families. It just has worked out that it's super easy. I mean, if you're gonna be having your stove on to cook up your egg noodles to serve this on top of, you might as well do it in the skillet. But before it was a skillet meal for us, we started with it in the slow cooker. And so you can go ahead and put this in your slow cooker. It's gonna work beautifully. It's gonna be ready when you need it to be ready. So into your large freezer bag, you're gonna put some browned ground beef, chopped onion, minced garlic, again from the jar. You're gonna put some sliced mushrooms. Over the years, we have increased the amount of mushrooms that we <laughs> add, and this last mega session, we had bought too many mushrooms, and so we really increased yes. the amount of mushrooms that we had in here. So it is sort of a, you know, you could add three quarters of a cup, a cup, all the way up to like two cups if you want. You can want measure it. mushrooms with your heart. Absolutely. If you like them, if you don't like them, you could probably skip them. You could. Then you're gonna add some Worcestershire sauce, some cream of mushroom soup. So if you don't love mushrooms, this might not be the recipe for you, but it is so good. You're gonna add a bit of sour cream, parsley, and just a dash of pepper. You're gonna squish all that together. To combine it, you're gonna get your air out, seal that bag. Now it's a nice thin bag, which means that on the day you go to make this, it thaws really quickly. And we all have a place in our life for recipes that thaw quickly, because you have days where you're in a hurry and you need to get this in the slow cooker first thing in the morning and you didn't take it out the night before to thaw it. So you can just quickly thaw it in your sink or where you forgot to take out a freezer meal, because even to us, all these years later, it still happens. So that, you know, the, a thin bag, there is yes. a, there's a good reason to have a thin bag. And then you can put this in your slow cooker. Towards the end of cooking in your slow cooker, you're going to stir in a bit of additional sour cream. There is an actual amount listed in the recipe of half a cup, but I eyeball that. And if you like things a little bit tangier, you can add more. And you're gonna serve this over egg noodles. You can sprinkle some fresh parsley on top if you want, but really this is just meant to be sort of like a homey comfort food meal. You don't need to fancy it up any, it's just good. And we talk about the thin bag, but this actually feeds six people mm -hmm. easily. It's the egg noodles that right. stretch it. Mm -hmm. And in our house, it depends how many, our kids now are like teens and young adults. And and then we've got the one grandbaby that's living with us too, and he's a baby, so he's you know not eating a whole lot right now. But this depends on how many people are home, but sometimes we actually even end up with leftovers if we don't have everybody home. Mm. So it's the egg noodles, it just, bulks it up. But I'm gonna say, put your egg noodles in your bowl and then top it. If yes. you do an entire bag of egg noodles, 
and mix it in there, it's a little dry. Yeah. Um, my daughter has I made agree. it two times, and now I want to revisit the sticker on the, the mm -hmm. label, the instructions, because I want to make it more clear because she's done it twice and com and then she complains and I'm like, well, you just put it on top of the egg noodles in your bowl. You might right. have some noodles left over and that's okay. But if I find that the ratio of what's in the bag is just a little bit oh. high for, for how much there is in the meal, just so you know, I, you know, I don't really care what you do. You can put it in all together if you want, but we like you to get the best out of these recipes that you can. So we just pass along our little tips. And we're chatty. So if I think of something to say, it's going to come out of the mouth. <laughs> Perimenopause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. This video has been like all over the place because I'm telling you how to change your mindset about cooking and we're talking about perimenopause and it's messy. It is like this is great. All, and all the ground beef tips. So this has run the gamut, but it's been fun. It is fun. And now you know how things go during our freezer meal sessions. <laughs> when the cameras aren't rolling, we talk about everything. <laughs> It is true. We 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 cover a lot of ground. We cover a lot of territory. Yes, we absolutely do. We're so glad that you could join us today. It's way more fun when you guys are here. We're gonna put a video right there to some crock pot chicken recipes mm -hmm. because if you can find a sale on ground beef one week and make all these ground beef recipes or a whole bunch of them or even double them, and then another week you find a sale on chicken suddenly your freezer is full of way more variety and you've got meals covered for at least a month oh that sounds great right we want this for you we do want this for you freezer meals can change your life and um clearly when we're this philosophical <laughs> you can believe it we'll see you next time thank you so much happy cooking <laughs>